So we're at the Bank Station, which is in one of the new parts of London. Yeah. This bit of London was added 50 years ago when the river started smelling there's no sewage system. This is where the first sewage system was. So this is a new part of London. What I'm going to look at today is how a new form of music started in London. It's like right here at Embankment before it became part of the music industry in the West End. So what I'm going to look at today is how the skiffle music in London became the basis of an industry. In the beginning, and we're standing now under the bridge at Charing Cross, this was where the first skiffle was played in London. Um, I know this because I've read this fantastic book by Pete Frame. Some of you might know Pete Frame as the guy that does all the line drawings called Walk Family Trees. He's written this brilliant book a couple of years ago about how skiffle music became the basis of music. So Pete Frame points out in the interestingly entitled Restless Generation, which starts in 1955, that in December 1955, Bill Haley in the comments went to number one with Rock Around the Clock. It was the same time that the film Blackboard Jungle uh, was being watched in cinemas and Mods and Rock, well, rockers at that time, were tearing up the place at the excitement of it. John Lennon was one of the many people who did this. In July 1956, the whole situation changed where people that had to go to a cinema to see some kind of American music could actually start developing a music industry of their own and it started here. So today is Mother's Day 2012, 56 years after uh, skiffle music was played out in the streets around the corner where you've just seen us now in the Playhouse Theatre. Uh, there's a show called Dreamboats and Petticoats. Dreamboats and Petticoats is kind of an English American graffiti. Uh, looking at the music of the late 50s and early 60s that got the youth culture of that time out of their seats into the streets, making music, dancing, getting relations going and all the rest of it. The interesting thing is that one of the songs in here is by Tommy Steele. Tommy Steele was an early skiffle artist who was discovered in two nights. We'll see how come the skiffle group was made out in the street here, which was made in order to um, uh, entertain customers coming to this theatre, the Playhouse Theatre, for the shows at that time, 56 years ago. It's now the music inside the theatre, not just music in the streets. Let's go and have a look. The skiffle musicians played on this side of the street with their guitars and skiffle songs, which was just two guys in a skiffle, maybe a, a washboard, maybe some interesting songs, and across the road, all the way along there with the customers queuing up for the playhouse in order to get in and see the plays. The way that they made their music, because they were anarchists and communists and people that liked some American things at that time, being an anarchist meant that you liked America. Uh, they were people that made their money by putting a cap on the street, having people throw money at them for the music that they were making with their guitars. What happened to take a bunch of scruffy herberts playing their acoustic guitars with broken strings in the street to becoming the foundation of the British rock industry. Well, this is a tale of, of coffee shops. In fact, it's a tale of two coffee bars. The first coffee bar is just up the road here, the Guy and Gimbal on John Adams Street. And we're going to go and look at that now. As Stephen Johnson says in A Natural History of Innovation, new ideas come out of coffee shops. But in this case, we're interested in getting ideas into coffee shops and even more importantly, getting music into coffee shops. This, or possibly that, this is where the most famous coffee shop before the two eyes, uh, folk club coffee shop, it's called the Guy and Gimbal, and it's just 60, 70 yards from where Stephen is playing, and that's where Bankman Station. This was the kind of artistic thing as part of London. It's unsurprising that Bohemian folk music was being made here in early 1956. So, how did the Bohemian folkies who used to hang out in the Gyre and Gimbal down in John Adams Street, the side of Charing Cross, um, and play skiffle under uh, Charing Cross Bridge, how did they become part of the music industry? Well, the other Bohemian part of London, of course, was Soho. We're standing outside the French house where General de Gaulle and the Free French used to stay and spend their time, free time, during uh, the war. After the end of the war, the guy who was in charge, the French guy who ran this, used to run an annual festival on, of course, Bastille Day, 14th of July 1956. It was the events of 14th of July 1956 that changed the way that music uh, was run in cafes in the UK. So we're going to have a look at that now. 
Bastille Day in 1956, July the 14th, um, the usual um, carnival was created and a group called the Vipers, which included my friend John Landon Bosch on, on guitar, stole a pickup truck. If you've seen the picture of John Lennon and the Quarrymen playing in Walton Fate in 1957, that's what it looked like. They stole a pickup truck, got themselves at the back of the carnival, and as it wended its way all the way around Soho, there is Soho Square where Paul McCartney now has his office. But they played skiffle at the back. This was mobile learning, 1956 style. Skiffle and fun for everybody. And then they run out of road. We're now standing on Old Compton Street, the centre of the sexual bohemian uh, centre of London. So it's just around the corner from Dean Street and, and the French House. And you can see by this plaque, this is officially where rock and roll started in the UK. It wasn't quite as simple as that. The Two Eyes was a coffee bar that didn't have folk musicians in it. We're now standing on Old Compton Street, the centre of the sexual bohemian uh, centre of London. So it's just around the corner from Dean Street and, and the French House. And you can see by this plaque, this is officially where rock and roll started in the UK. It wasn't quite as simple as that. The Two Eyes was a coffee bar that didn't have folk musicians in it. But at the end of the carnival, uh, the, um, the, the end of the carnival of the Bastille Day in 1956, the Vipers jumped off, they abandoned their lorry here, they jumped off and came inside and ordered coffee, feeling that they'd, uh, they'd taken the music to the masses, at least the masses of Soho. Um, but being anarchists and communists and really using uh, that day to distribute leaflets about uh, politics, they had no money and they looked at coffee. So how did they pay for coffee when they got their money? They put their guitars out and started playing, they put their hat down and the people who were in the cafe at that time really liked what they heard and gave them some money uh, so they could pay for their coffee. So, there we have it. How did it start? It started on Bastille Day in 1956. It started because the Vipers uh, stole a lorry in order they could be part of the, uh, the carnival and then dropped inside the coffee shop for a coffee when they had no money and had to play music to get paid. How does Pete Frame in his book describe it? Actually, it's got one of my favourite, the favourite paragraph of the whole book. This is what he said. When the parade, the Bastille Day parade, came to a standstill, they, the Vipers, found themselves out at the side of the coffee shop with two eyes. Not on the hip circuit, so this wasn't a cool place for the Vipers to turn there. Uh, it's just a coffee bar in Old Compton Street. Nevertheless, the Vipers dismounted, abandoned their lorry and entered the premises for refreshment. As I said, they got coffee, sat down, began playing guitars. So the proprietor didn't seem to mind, but I've never seen this before. He kept looking across at them, but not with any hint of displeasure uh, or negativity. He didn't even object when they took the hat out and passed it around for people to pay. Uh, getting a few, as Pete Frank said, getting a few copies from the tourists. As they were preparing to leave, he intercepted them. This is the group at the moment. Excuse me, lads, he said. I'd be happy to come in and sing here any time you like. And this is how the Vipers began the first residency of the two eyes. Sure, they said, thinking to extend their territory. We'll see you one evening next week. And this is my favourite paragraph. It was as if a seed blown across the desert had lodged in a spot, fertile enough to take root, and sprout into a giant beanstalk. The like of which no one had seen before, the entire British rock scene is built upon that one chance visit, and that's why we have a black hit. Thanks for the Now me and my wife went to town. This was where the people that signed the contracts and the people from the music industry. So the way I fantasise it, and this is a fantasy now, 
So one day when they are walking back to Denmark Street to, to Pan Alley, that way, they must have seen some skiffle players with their guitars going into the two eyes and thinking, what's this? And that's when the music industry moved in on the, on the skiffle industry created the British rock scene as a big frame. Oh, she rock me, daddy, oh, no, she rock me, daddy, oh, yeah, she rock me, daddy, oh.